what would be the top three things that every nonprofit should do to dial up retention? Wow. The top three. The first one that comes to mind is measure retention because part of the reason we're so focused on donor acquisition is we just want money in the door because we know that's going to be the final question that's asked. So there are a lot of fundraisers that don't necessarily track visits. They don't track uh, cultivation visits, solicitation visits, or stewardship visits. They just track dollars in the door. And so if you start tracking, first of all, retention, you can then break it down to, all right, what are the components of retention? How many people did you say thank you to? What is the system for our our gift acknowledgement and then our follow-up with donors. Uh, how frequently are we communicating with them? There's all sorts of things under that number that you can start doing to kind of build up to whatever you feel is effective. But I would say for the first year or two, if you don't know, track it and or else find out what it's been because you need a benchmark. And, and if anybody's coming from the business world, it's not what the business world's customer retention has been. So you need to look back on that. So that would be the first one is measure it when we look at our donor database, if we're bleeding 70% of our donors, let's say. So, but what we do is we try to look at our demographic analysis of our database and find who are the type of people that give to us and get them again. Well, if we're already having lousy retention, what we're doing is getting more people that will never give to us after the first gift. So what, we, what the other thing to look at is not just look at, don't look at all of your donor database, as good as that can be. Look at who are the people that are repeat givers. Who are the people that have given year after year after year? I would submit that it shouldn't be fiscal year, it should be calendar year because that's the donor year. The donors are thinking more tax year. But um, then what are the commonalities? You know, your, your typical donor may be um, a baby boomer, uh, a female baby boomer from middle America um, who's got three kids and um, works part-time out of the house. That may be your typical donor, but they may not be your typical repeat donor. Your typical repeat donor may still be a World War II vet who has a lot of time on, her, on his or her hands to read the entire fundraising appeal and do other things too. Um, and so that'll shape you. It, it, your stories may be, will probably be the same because it's your organization, but it'll shape the way you, you focus on retaining new donors. Um, and targeting. So that's the second thing I would do. My theory is that people don't change. People generally behave this, the same way over, right. there's like this consistency from beginning to end. And if you look at the past, you and you measure it and you look at what, what you know, what kind of person is a repeat donor, chances yeah. are, you know, the future is not going to be different from the past. I was just reading at a blog post that you probably saw parsing out some of uh, President Obama's fundraising is particularly online fundraising, and what they said was that donor uh, voting preferences and political party preferences didn't matter. It was what was the most effective measure was had they given before. So yeah, look at their actions. Have they done this before? Then they're probably likely to do it again. So what's number three? You know, uh, what one thing I guess I would would be to to check out the February 2013 nonprofit blog Carnival, uh, mm -hmm. which conveniently was hosted at fundraisingcoach.com. Mm -hmm. But there are 16 different people here that give you their take on donor retention. There's even an accountant who has an idea, uh, a guy who teaches accounting at a, at a business school in Ohio po submitted a post on how you can tell your story and numbers with the pie chart in a way that is transparent and helps donors see, yep, they're good stewards of my money. I thank people in the way they want to be thanked. And this works if you're going to say 10,000 people or if you're going to say 10 people. Uh, first of all, get your gift acknowledgement out. I know it's supposed to be 24 to 48 hours. You know as well as I do because we're both generous people. Most nonprofits don't ever thank or acknowledge the fact that they've received a gift from you. Um, so I, you know, that's just a shame. You know, bad shame on us as nonprofit industry for not thanking people. Uh, you go to a store, you get a receipt. I mean, it's come on. It's not rocket science. It's just generating letters and sending them out. So do it. Uh, but then also um, look at the ways you're thinking them throughout the year. And it doesn't have to be a glossy image, but try adding one new thing. Try adding, um, if they're on social media, try showing pictures of your mission taking place. There was a book that came out called Creating Customer Evangelists. And I created, I, I got Jackie Huba and Ben McConnell's permission to write Creating Donor Evangelists. And one of the things that is sticking out right now from that, they had six tenets to helping your donors become not just check writers, but may, raving fans, people that would actually refer new people to you. And one of them was simply getting pictures of people sh using your stuff. And my favorite is, is not far from you. It's uh, Nick's Roast Beef. 
up on the North Shore in uh, in Beverly, Mass. They have little ugly blue bumper stickers that say Nick's Roast Beef across them. And they have pictures all over their walls of people underwater with scuba gear with a Nick's Roast Beef bumper sticker, people in what looks like Antarctica, uh, people, and, and then in all these other recognizable places around the world too uh, with their bumper sticker. So if there's a way that you can get people using something that has your name on it. You know, I, I just noticed when we started this, I picked up my, my Mickey Mouse Disney cup um, and that's it's the same thing. I mean, what can you get a picture of someone doing uh, and, and then make that a theme? Well, on that note, um, thanks again, Mark. This is great. And where, um, where, where, where do you want people to reach you if they're, if they're interested in following up? Well, definitely uh, people can reach me at fundraisingcoach.com. All my contact information and everything is there. The blog post on donor retention is there. Uh, and you could just search donor retention because that would lead you both to the nonprofit profit blog carnival post with all 16 people in it but it would also lead you to the donor retention project link that um, we're doing um, to with 12 experts coming together over 12 weeks teaching people how to do uh, it'll be released on DVDs or CDs and uh, that's an another URL for that is donorretentionjazz.com